Now, folk don't say Lucy, but does anyone know what they call the woman from whom all women are descended from? Anybody know her name? They gave her a name. It's, I'll give you a hint. It's a thing for, that comes from a book that is forbidden. Yes. Is it Mary? No. no. That's uh, <laughs> Eve. Mitochondrial Eve. And then it just should be obvious, the Y chromosome man from whom all men are descended from. Adam. 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 Again, they come, those names come from a book that is forbidden in the days of it. I want to remind you, this is college, folks. My boss has told us we can say what we want to. And really, I am careful about what I say, you might not think so, but I am careful what I say. Adam and Eve. Now, there is one thing though about this. The mitochondrial Eve is much older than black chromosome Adam. Have any of you? I want to tell you. I believe every human being has heard this story. There's a story out there about a disaster that hit the human race that killed everybody except for one man and his sons and their wives. Anybody know what story I'm talking about? What story? Noah's Ark. One man. And apparently the women were not as close related to the men. Were all, I mean, the three young men were all brothers, descended from Noah. And he had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the women were, their names aren't given in the Bible, they are given in other sources, apparently not related that closely. That is why we have the Adam. And Noah is really the Adam from whom all today's men are descended from. And we don't know at the moment for sure who all women are descended from, except we call her Marty Pondo Eve. Might be the Eve of the Bible, might not. There, but the ancients said there were other disasters beside the flood. Uh, but the, the flood story is found all over the world by all people, just like dragon stories, giant stories, stories of the fall from the Garden of Eden, found all over the world. The zodiac, I mentioned the Chinese have 12 signs of zodiac, so did the Greeks, so did the Europeans the Europeans besides the Greeks, indicating that one time all mankind was together, then mankind scattered out. And his, but a lot of his stories he carried with him. Um, now if you read the account, they'll say, oh no, this does not prove the Bible. What it proves is that there was a big war that went on or some disaster, and Eve's descendants were better than everybody else, so Eve's descendants were able to wipe out everybody else's descendants. Hardly. Sounds a bit fetched or I said one one person said that one day Eve went on a hunting trip when she got back she found her entire village destroyed and she was the only woman left. Um, that means there was only one village in the whole world at the time that had human beings. So believe what you will, folk. Nevertheless, I wonder if they're gonna do a study of dogs and find that all dogs are descended from one pair of dogs. And then all cats are descended from one pair of cats. I mean I wonder. Um, all right. Anyway, the, the flood story found all over the world. Now, back to this. <clears throat> the orange here represents the female, the spread of the female DNA. Starts out in Africa, but then it, had, it goes from Africa to a common starting point around Mount Ararat. And from Mount Ararat spreads the females, the lineage spread all over the globe. Does anybody know what happened at Mount Ararat? Mount Ararat is the place where the Ark of Noah landed. Oh, believe what you will, the flood story is not just a fairy tale written, it's written in our DNA, written in our genes. All right. Fairy tales. How much of them do you believe? I mean, do I believe? More and more, I'm starting to believe most of them. The story that Venus popped out of Zeus's head. 
the ancients might have observed that Venus might have once been a moon going around the planet Jupiter, and some star came by, or, or fragments of a star that was an Ovid, and turned Uranus on its side. If you know anything about the source of the planet, Uranus is located, I mean, it's tilted 90 degrees on its side. I don't know how many of you heard that. And then it went by Jupiter and took Venus away from Jupiter, and the ancients observed Venus breaking away from Jupiter, so that's the grounds for that mythology. That Venus was once a moon. But from, see, again, if you look at Jupiter tonight, I mean, any time, you don't see the four moons that you use a small telescope. Yes? Did the people of that time have telescopes to observe that? I think they I'm not going to say yes or no. Here's why. They knew about Neptune. They knew about Uranus, and they appear to have known about Pluto. You can't see these bodies without that. Now Uranus, on a, if the person with a really good keen set of eyes, on a cold, clear night, away from any city, can see Uranus. Just like you see Sirius. You can but, see it, but it's difficult to identify. Yeah, you have to know that it's there before you look. In other words, you, won't, you wouldn't notice it. And also, it's known that Uranus was noticed by telescopes before Herschel discovered the planet. But well, Pluto was actually found in 1915. It was photographed, but, no, but the person who photographed did not know it was a planet until what, 1930. Anyway, yeah. And perhaps the people of those days, you know, they didn't have you know, smartphones to look at all day, so they're probably staring at the sky for inordinate amounts of time to yes. notice that they, this, they, this particular object in the sky has moved this amount, so it must be this far away. You know, thus is the the, the early stages of, of you know, the they, I, I really believe that they were smarter, number one. They were so smart that they made muscle of them. <laughs> All right, I don't like to use that word, but that they were much, much smarter than we are. And they knew more about geometry, they knew more about mathematics, and knew more than we do. Um, and as far as studying astronomy, that was essential, it's extremely essential for them to know when to plant the crops. Astronomy was very, very important to study. Uh, but as time went on, man became less and less smart until modern time. But did they have telescopes? I think definitely, more than likely, yes. I mean, they had batteries. Baghdad battery. Do the research, look up Baghdad battery. It put out about four tenths of a volt. They could put them in series and get a lot of they, they could use nickel pla pla plating. You can't do nickel plating without electricity. They had nickel plating. All right, you don't believe it? I don't blame you. You're not taught this. No, I, I don't not believe that. It's just the, the modern term confuses us. What did they have? They had the Energizer Bunny back then? No. We're thinking like probably, you know, potato factory. Their, well, their science took off in a different direction from ours. All right, here's why I think why. And in some way, they, they might seem primitive to us, but then if they could see us, we seem primitive to them. Um, fundamental, all right, I feel like I'm getting in deep here. The fundamental assumption of modern science is, and it's been adopted by the fundamental of modern scholarship is, Every phenomena in the universe has a rational explanation. The folk I've seen, I've heard some scientists say that there are some things about our universe that we just cannot explain it, we're never going to explain it. They did not hold to this view. They believed in phenomena that we might today call magic or supernatural. You get to studying the Vedas in India, and they, they had planetary travel. They could go from one planet to another. This is in the Vedas, and even travel among the stars. Have any of you in here heard any of this from any other source besides me? No. It's evoke, read the Vedas. They had Vimanas, they have, they have devices called Vimanas that could not only fly, but they could also work like submarines. None of our airplanes are submarines. And none of our airplanes, or our submarine can jump out of the water and start flying. I don't blame you if you don't believe it. I mean, I'm told prepare for a ride. Prepare for a shock. 
Try open your complacent minds. Uh, did they have telescopes? They might have actually been there. Okay. Wait, that what did you say about submarine planes? We don't have a submarine yeah, that can, can jump out of the water and start flying. Uh -huh. They did. Dude. According to their own records in the rig bay um, among the Hindu peoples. How long ago? Maybe only two or three, maybe about three or four thousand years ago. They have draw. They made drawings. They had instruction manuals. Kind of build one. Yeah, they <laughs> have that too. Now, something I want to tell you: Alexander the Great was never wounded until he got to India, and then he was hit in India by an arrow, and he never recovered. Some will say no. He was actually hit by one of their an ordinary arrow could not hurt him. He was hit by one of the Hindu guided missiles that really, really could hurt him. And he never fully recovered. He died, about, he was about 34 years old. Partly in a drunken stupor. And possibly he was murdered by his, poisoned by his own man. Um, I, again, um, hey, hey, if you're skeptical, I don't blame you. We are taught that we, we are the top crown of civilization and actually, everything that we see today has already been done before us, but done greater and stronger and mightier and with more intelligence than we have. Marina said, I'm going to write. This is college. I'll do it. I'll quote the Bible. There is nothing new under the sun. Can anyone look at anything and say this was never done before? It has already been an old time. The ancients already have done it. That was written more than 2,500, more almost 3,000 years ago. Yes. It was all greater. What's that? It was all greater than now. Why is not that greater? Why is it? Everything was greater in the past. Well, why did none of it survive until now? It's all better. We can make things I am so glad you asked that question. You might not be aware that all that we have today could be wiped out in less than a split second. If the sun hits us the wrong way, every every microprocessor in a, how many you've heard this and, and ship would be wiped. Or if the North Koreans hit us with the right kind of an electrical impulse, if all of our microchips are gone, we go back to being primitive again overnight. The point I'm trying to make is that these civilizations went downhill and it was lost. It went this way. It didn't go up this way. It went this way. This is the natural order of things, to go down and not to go up. Now, we don't like to hear that because we are facing a world where the, every bit of technology we have could instantly, suddenly be lost. Oh, God. You, you've heard it at least. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. I thought you were saying that. By way you were saying is that it would be going up steadily and then suddenly drop back down. It can it, what I've read is that mankind can go from fighting with spears and clubs today and fighting with nuclear weapons overnight tomorrow. Or you can go from fighting with nuclear weapons today to fighting with clubs and sticks and stones tomorrow. They asked Jim MacArthur, now, what do you think World War IV will be fought with? He said, sticks and stones. You've heard that? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. He actually says that he believed World War IV be fought with sticks and stones. All right. We think that all knowledge is gradual and slow. It can happen in an instant, or it can be lost in an instant. Um, all right. So, uh, let me say one thing. If you decide you don't want to take the course, do me and you a favor and officially drop. If you don't drop, at the end of the semester, all I can do for you is give you an F, and that counts as zero. You can drop and it won't, I mean, you drop before the deadline. The deadline is on the syllabus sometime in October. Uh, but don't just simply quit coming. Of course, I say this in every semester, somebody does. Uh, I will say this, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and some of you look like you wanted to sleep at first, but, I, but by the end of the class, I got all of you awake as part of what I intended to do, and also, I intended to shock you into 
out of your complacency, which is part of my job, what I intend to do. And uh, again, you're going to be shocked more. And if you believe the government should help you out of your poverty, you might be offended with some of the things they have done. When governments get involved, I'll be fine. We're going to talk about that. When governments get involved in helping the poor, oh my, oh my. All right.